Welcome back, guys. We are still working on the Studio Series TIE Fighter 132nd Scale, a fantastic new model kit by AMT for 2023. This is a huge modern edition of the TIE Fighter. So in the last video, I did a lot of work on the TIE Fighter interior, all those decals for the panels, and the TIE Fighter pilot. You can see him in there with his very nice control panel. I've also done some work on the floor, so we'll be able to light that from underneath. Since that video was made, I've gone ahead and I put light blocking paint all the way around this kind of interior egg. I did black, silver, and I finished it off with a white. I've also done some light blocking paint on the inside of the two main halves, just kind of where I'm going to have some LEDs. And I painted and added a little bit of a wash uh, to this interior piece. I've also begun to join together a handful of LEDs to light our ship. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to insert our TIE Fighter interior into these two main halves. And then we'll start epoxying in some of our LEDs. So small changes and updates throughout this entire project. Uh, to get kind of a deeper red coming up from the bottom, I did add some clear red to both pieces here. So now that LED down here will just have a lot more red to work with. And one note is when you put this together, this post for the stand goes directly up against that clear part. So to put a hole in for the wire, you can't come in from the top, you have to come in from the side. All right, so you can see we have an LED on both sides pointed back at these holes where we'll have a clear part. Down on the bottom, we've got two green LEDs pointed out towards those blasters and two LEDs to illuminate that red floor. I've cut a hole in this bottom part so that the wires can reach out. Next, we're going to just close up this main part of the TIE Fighter. Everything on this kit fits so nicely together. It holds really tight. And we're just going to close this up with all of those little wires underneath. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice fit. Okay, let's light this up. All right, so that is our lit cockpit. You can kind of see that red floor has lit up the walls with a nice red shine. And you can see we have some green coming down uh, for our blasters. Let's just kind of put a clear part in there. All right, so these parts, we'll have to add the base coat and some light blocking on most of it, leaving the tips lit and probably a little bit more clear green right there on the tips there. Back here, you can see we have the LED shining at those holes. Let's add the kit part and the clear part. Okay, and there we'll have our two lit engines. One thing I was a little surprised by, but I probably shouldn't end up been, is there is some space between this part and the outer bit of the hole. So I am getting some light spilling out here across kind of the front there. We'll have to see what that looks like with the front of the TIE Fighter on. But overall, very happy uh, with how the lighting is working. And now we can move on to the really fun part of the build. I feel like the difficult part is really over. The next step is to cover this TIE Fighter with all sorts of detail parts. You can see there's just parts here um, left blank for those detail parts to be put on. That's going to add a lot of the detail and the look to this TIE Fighter. So I'm going to put those on, then we get to move on to painting. Okay, let's take a quick look at the instructions just because I want you to understand how many little greeblies and detail parts are about to go on this TIE Fighter. Just all sorts of greeblies and little kit parts are going to cover this thing up. And then at the end, we're going to have some larger parts that are going to kind of cover up some of the seams. Now we can look at these on the sprues, uh, but really when we're going to really see what they add to the model is when we have them on the model and we have a coat of paint on it. So I'm going to take some time off camera. 
I'm gonna try and add in all these little greebly parts to the TIE Fighter, and I'll be back with that. Here's how the model looks after a base coat. And you can see I did just mask off the very tips of those blasters. And then I added some light blocking paint down here over the blasters. Then I did the entire hull in a base coat. And you can see just all of those little greeblies all over the ship. And it's kind of nice that some of them are not symmetrical. So you have kind of this little piece on this side, not on this side. And I think there were some differences kind of along the back here, but you can see how nice that looks with all the added detail. Oh, a couple design notes. So um, in the last video, I kind of talked about inaccuracies between the studio model and the interior model. Another one is the orientation of this framework. So on the actual studio miniatures for the TIE Fighters, the frame is like this with a frame at the 12 o'clock position and the six o'clock position. But then on the interior sets, it's like this so that our pilot does not have a frame directly in front of his face. So this matches the interior and this matches the exterior. And when you look at this part, you can see there are cutouts for both orientations. So you can pick the way you want it to be, whether you want to match the interior or the exterior, and then just put the frame on uh, the way you'd like it to be. Okay, there aren't many, but there are some spare parts. So these are the little control wires and harnesses and yokes for the cockpit. And each of those little things you did get a spare and I did use one. Um, yeah, I had a piece where I'm not sure if I lost it or I broke it, but yep, I did use this spare, but otherwise you have some spare pieces there. Um, this little piece, you use about eight of these along the back of the TIE Fighter near that main center structure, and you do get one extra there. And then these pieces you use kind of, well, I'll show you where these are, uh, but you did get two spares of those. So if you lose anything to the carpet or run into any other problems, you do have a few spares of those real tiny pieces. Uh, these, you get one extra one of these, one extra one of these. Um, this was one of the ones where you get an extra piece. And then those little silver, or the what I've painted silver, those are the control pieces where you get a spare one of each of those. So very nice consideration from round two in AMT, uh, just to provide you with a few extras in case something goes wrong. All right, I was masking this part off because some of these shapes here and here and here are supposed to be a slightly different color gray. And as I was masking them, I noticed the paint was kind of flaking off. And I was baffled because I never have this problem. Um, my paints are really good. I, I do a lot of masking. I use a lot to Maya tape and I never have paint peel up. I've never had paint peel up since I stopped using my last brand of paint. And so we're talking at least eight years since I've had any paint peeling the way I do my models. And I was baffled. I was like, oh, does this kit have some different type of plastic? Do I have a bad batch of paint? Did I mix my paint wrong? This is the part that I boiled in the first video. In the last video I did, I had to boil this part to fix some of the warping. And now I'm having paint adhesion problems. So something in that process of boiling it must have brought out more oil or more byproduct from the plastic um, that just is keeping some of the paint from sticking. So that might be something, I'm not gonna glue this hatch on. I'm gonna think I'm gonna finish the video without doing these extra panels. It's something I'm gonna deal with later, uh, but just something that didn't occur to me that boiling the part to unwarp it might change the part a little bit and it is giving me a little bit of paint adhesion problems. I tested a few other parts. Nothing else is having this problem. Nothing else is having problems with paint sticking. It's just this part that I boiled and then stuck in some ice water. Well, hopefully you can see a little bit more of that detail a little bit better. I added just a bit of a panel line wash over the ship, uh, just so you can see a little more depth and shadow on those pieces. And I, I'm really excited about this kit. I'm having a blast building it. 
I love how it looks, even though I don't have the wings on it yet. Um, I love how it's looking throughout this build. I, I'm really tempted just to slap the wings on it right now and just say we're good and say the model is complete because I love how it looks. Uh, but the last step I have are these tiny little decals. AMT has provided a lot of little marking decals to go around the edges of the TIE Fighter, um, which I'm going to add them on just so we have those last little details there. Something this big, it's good to get a lot of those little details on it. But with or without decals, and I don't always put decals on my Star Wars ships, but I love how this looks and I can't wait to see it. We are so close to being done. And like always, the side of our box has all sorts of little call-outs for what decals will go where. This is such a neat model, and it's, it's easy to forget how big it is until you put the wings on. And that's what we're going to do now. So on the wings, you have a very large connecting surface here. And we're just going to go ahead and put our wing on. Very simple to do. And we do have a little hubcap here that you'll put on to cover everything up. It's falling over since I only have one wing on it. All right, so here is a little Bandai 172nd Darth Vader Advanced TIE. Here is a TIE Fighter from the 1997 Twin Pack, uh, redone by Round 2 recently. Here is another Darth Vader Advanced TIE. This is the one originally done in 1997 with some improvements released by Round 2 once again in the past couple of years. All right, let's bring out a few more. Here is a little TIE Interceptor. That's another Bandai kit. And let's bring out another AMT release. This is another TIE Interceptor. And of course, this TIE Interceptor and this TIE Fighter share a lot of the same parts. And now, here it comes. The Studio Series AMT TIE Fighter. So hopefully this gets through a little bit of the scale of this ship going kind of from the Bandai 172nd to that classic 1997 Darth Vader Advanced TIE. And that's a huge TIE Fighter kit. And then you come across to our newest build. Of course, this is a wonderful little TIE Fighter build. But this is our new one. So... Both the Darth Vader's Advanced TIE and the Studio Series TIE Fighter are billed as being 132nd scale. Uh, they're clearly not in the same scale. The TIE Fighter, much bigger. This is a massive model kit. Now, of course, this TIE Fighter has lights, so let's get those turned on. So you can see all the little decals that I've added on. They really do help things out. Of course, we've got those cool green blaster cannons. And we've got our TIE Fighter Pilot. Let's see if we can zoom in on any of this. Okay. And let's actually change the orientation here. All right, there is our TIE Fighter Pilot. There's our TIE Fighter Interior. Very cool. I do really like that red light shining in there. I like how it kind of blends the background and those decals together. It makes a very cool interior there. And I don't even mind the light spillage I have between those two parts. I think that kind of white light, which looks a little blue coming up there, makes it look pretty neat. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on on these parts. Lots of detail. Um, I love my wash. I think it really kind of sell some of that detail there yeah it's a good looking kit coming along the back you can see all the panel lines you can see the difference the little decals make you can see my little lit up engines back here i like those 
it's a gorgeous looking kit. Once again, if you look at the detail back here on these wing parts, everything fits together flawlessly and it looks great. Now, I, I've heard people say they, they kind of complain about how it's a big hollow sphere and the cockpit can't be that big. Where's the actual engine? You know, in my mind, it's energy collection here on the wing. The energy goes in. And I think all of this, I think this is a massive engine. To me, the TIE Fighter pilot is sitting between two massive engines. They kind of shoot inwards and get directed out the back. But to me, this is the engine, this is the engine, and they're just directed back here around the pilot. You know, it takes a brave Imperial soldier to strap himself into something like this. Yeah, every view here looks great. Okay, let's see if we can get a better view on our pilot, on that window that's behind him. Definitely a fun model kit. And and I, I liked spending so much time on the interior. I like that it's there. I think it really kind of sells the scale. I was trying to think if I had anything in the same scale. And I was. it occurred to me that little Captain Kirk here from the Galileo shuttle, he's pretty much in scale here. And the Galileo, once again, a question about what scale that actually is. But also build as being 1 32nd. So here is the TIE fighter with the Galileo 7. And I'm sorry, Kirk and Spock, but you're probably not coming back from this one if you've got that TIE fighter behind you. Of course, if a TIE fighter were anywhere close to the Enterprise, the Enterprise would devastate the TIE fighter. Also, I don't know how the TIE fighter would hold up against this guy, a 132nd scale Colonial Viper. This is a Viper Mark II, and looking at the pilots, you know, I do think the TIE Fighter is still a little big, uh, but these two could be in the same scale. Um, yeah, I think it matches up a little bit better with the Darth Vader Advanced TIE, uh, but both these, once again, build as 132nd. <laughs> if, I, if I put money on it, I'd go with the Colonial Viper. I don't really have an X-Wing big enough for this TIE fighter. This is a 148th scale X-Wing. I believe this is by Fine Mold. I think this is a reboxing I have from Ravel. Uh, but you can see, I, I think to have an X-Wing that would match up well with that TIE fighter. What is it, Hasbro? Doesn't Hasbro have a toy that was like 129th? That would probably match up pretty well with this, of course. Modelers need to do a lot of updates to that one to make it match up. But yeah, that's, I don't have anything as big as this TIE Fighter. Um, I'm going to have to have it just on display by itself. This TIE Fighter is just so clearly a statement piece. You know, you're going to build this, set it someplace prominent, and it makes a statement. It is big, it is huge, it is imperial, it is imposing. I love it. it it's, it's exactly what it is. A modern, big, large-scaled model of a TIE Fighter. And I can't wait to have it on display in my room. Um, and it's a statement piece from AMT in round two that they're going to be making when they can make a new, a completely new model. It's going to be top-notch. It's going to be lightable. It's going to be easy to work with. It's going to have a great fit. And it's going to look imposing and awesome on display. I love it. I love this model kit. It's been a blast to work on. And man, I'm really settling into liking the Empire and liking all these TIE Fighters. Um, even though I am a Y-Wing kind of guy, I, I love this. And I can't wait to see what Round 2 keeps coming up with for their Star Wars line. I would love it if in a year or two we had a TIE Interceptor based upon this. I think it would be awesome to do something like this in a scale like that. So that's about all I have for this AMT Studio Series TIE Fighter. A fun build, a well-fitting model kit, and an impressively huge TIE Fighter. Uh, it's been 
a joy to work on. Thank you to Round 2 for letting me work on this review copy. And I think coming next on the channel, it's going back to Star Trek. We are going to be working on the Kronos 1 version of the Katinga. Another big model kit with full lighting, with lots of photo etch, with a lot of cool paint jobs. So I hope you guys will keep following the channel to see that build. And I'll be back soon.